Welcome to our presentation about sports and the civil rights movement. We're going to talk about how the movement affected sports and focus on three major athletes who stood up against racial discrimination. But before we head on to our main topic, we'll quickly summarize the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement took place during the early 50s and late 60s in the United States. It was a mass protest movement against racial segregation and discrimination. The goal was to end legalize racial segregation and discrimination laws in the United States and secure the legal recognition and federal protection of citizenship rights established in the U.S. Constitution. It involved many different strategies and approaches, including legal action, just like nonviolent civil disobedience and black militancy. This includes events like the Montgomery bus boycott, Brown vs. Board of Education, and the creation of many black power groups. It emerged as a response to the unfulfilled promises of the Emancipation Proclamation issued by the President Abraham Lincoln on January 1, 1863, which granted freedom to all slaves. Almost a century passed by and the African American folks still lived the horrors of pure hatred and racism. The law treated them unfairly and were looked as inferiors to the white folks. Many black athletes struggled to get to the major leagues because of their skin color. Those who did break the color barriers of their respective sports were known as national heroes. Sports during the Civil Rights Movement A famous quote said by Jackie Robinson is, I am not concerned with your liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. This is important because it showed how most of the, of the black athletes felt during the time. Rights activists used sports as a platform to reach out to people because this was the major form of entertainment for the time. It was said that black athletes were dumb and weren't as capacitated as white ones uh, to perform in sports, but this was proven wrong in the Olympics in Berlin. Sports provided the primary form of national entertainment. People watched sport as an entertainment. In World War II, black athletes were arrested. In the 19th century and the 20th century, they started playing interracial sports until the whites saw the competitions with the black athletes. When the white people saw the competition between the black people and the white people, knowing that maybe the black people could be better, they, they just decided that they couldn't compete with them. So they divided the, the league between the white league and the lesser known black league. Both athletes and coaches use their participation to change the racial atmosphere. The initiative to integrate black people into sports in the forest opened a way for a series of events in favor of equality. We begin with our first athlete named Muhammad Ali, also known as the greatest, due to his amazing record in boxing. He was born on January 17, 1942, in Louisville, Kentucky. His birth name was Marcellus Clay Jr., but he later changed it to Muhammad Ali once he joined the Nation of Islam, a group known for being black supremacists. He referred to his old name as his slave name. He decided to go with something that had a special meaning, and he went with Muhammad Ali that meant beloved of God. And he, and he insisted people to call him like that. He set an example of racial pride for African Americans and resisted to the white domination during the civil rights movement. He was heavily involved with society, meaning he cared for those black people who were being mistreated and harmed. In 1967, he was stripped from his heavyweight title because he refused to fight in the Vietnam War. His explanation as to why he didn't go to the Vietnam War was that he didn't have any quarrel with the Viet Cong. No Viet Cong ever called him the N-word. He treats the Vietnamese with respect, and he had no reason to go fight against them. Three years later, the United States Supreme Court ruled in his favor, and he boxed again. He was a controversial figure, but no one can discredit his role in pushing for equal rights. Here we have pictures of Muhammad Ali with important civil rights activists like Malcolm X, who was his mentor, Martin Luther King, and him being interviewed. Now, I will talk about Jack Roosevelt Robinson. He was born on January 31st in 1919 in Gato, Georgia, which was a state in the South, therefore racism was stronger there. He served in the military from 1942 to 1944, but was court-martialed in 1944 because he denied to give his seat to a white person in a bus. 
When he came back from the military, he started playing professional baseball but wasn't allowed to play with white people. He had to play in the Negro Leagues with the other black people. On April 15 of 1947, Jackie Robinson broke the color segregation in baseball when he started playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers in Major League Baseball. He played through many adversities. He received a lot of insults and even death, death threats from other players and fans. A very fa famous game was the Brooklyn Dodgers versus, versus the Philadelphia Phillies in which the opposing team's manager started shouting insults at Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson responded to these death threats and insults in a passive way. He was non-violent about it because if he would, were to be violent, they would be separated again. So this was very important for the unification of the league. <laughs> The, the third person we're going to talk about is Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens is very known as the Bouquet Bullet. He was born on a September 12th and his career began in high school when on the National inter Scholastic Championship he won three events. Two years later, while competing for the Ohio State University, he equaled one world record and broke three other before even qualifying to the Olympic Games. In the Olympic Games in Berlin, he gained four gold medals and broke two world records, and these records lasted 20, 25 years. Jesse Owens was also a grandson of slaves. He proved Hitler wrong. wrong. On the Olympics in Berlin, Hitler wanted to, wanted to prove that the Aryan people were the dominant race, but Jesse Owens proved him wrong by winning four gold medals. When he returned from the Olympics Games in Berlin, the President of the United States did not receive him as it was expected. The White House was an opponent for him. President Roosevelt did not receive him as he will receive another athlete. Even though almost all the medals that were gained by the USA were from black people, USA won 11 medals, six of them were from black people, and four of them were from Jesse Owens, even though that they didn't receive him in the White House. He was probably recognized later by the President Ford. His experience made him realize and talk about racism and black athletes. He even compared the President Roosevelt to Hitler when he said one day, when I came back to my native country, after all the stories about Hitler, I couldn't ride in the front of the bus, he said. I had to go to the back door I couldn't leave where I wanted. I wasn't invited to shake hands with Hitler, but I wasn't invited to the White House to shake hands with the president either. Maybe he did not say that in order to convert those two figures, but it is a direct critic to the president and the racism. Hitler and Roosevelt, both of them felt like they were superiors to others. He then died of lung cancer. Jesse Owen was important to the movement because even though he was not fighting directly against racism, he did it with his words and his talents. He did put a grain of sand on the mountain of sand that changed history. And these are photos of, of Jesse Owens. Here is a quote. Although I wasn't invited to shake hands with Hitler, I wasn't invited to the White House to shake hands with President Hitler. In conclusion, sport has been of very importance in the history of equality. And here are some words cited. Thanks for watching.